Yo, Simsy Breeze, and as you know, this month, February 2016, marks the 30th anniversary of Discobobulator Boobulator. And I'm going to try to tell a story, a short story every day about Discobobulator Boobulator that a lot of people don't know. And um, one story is that I could think that comes to mind is I remember when I first got finished recording Discombobulator Boobulator. I took it to a girlfriend that I was dealing with at the time and let her hear the song. And she was like, wow, this is great. I want to let my friend Al hear it. And uh, so she took the she took the, 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 the cassette to Al and um, or I left it there. And, she, and so she called me like a few days later and said, yeah, well, Al said it, it's not that good. It sucks or whatever. And um, little did Al know I had already recorded it. Not so much recorded, well, of course I recorded it, but I had already began the process of pressing the record. So I didn't really even, I, I really didn't give a damn what Al thought. It's just that this girl was trying to help me out, and she and she knew that Al was about to put a bunch of Philly artists on Job Records. Not Job, it was a Job, not Job Records, it was Four From Broadway. And um, so she wanted me to be included in that group. And was it, what was interesting and ironic is that this guy Al, he signed a bunch of other artists to Four From Broadway, I got a record deal on my own through Four From Broadway later on, which was which is pretty cool. And um, but anyway, it just goes to show you gotta follow your heart, follow your dreams and your ideas. Um, Discombobulated became an underground classic, and um, I've met all kind of people, been all around the world because I took that step of putting that record out, regardless of what other people thought. So that was a Discombobulated moment, and peace and thanks to all that supported me. I'm out, got work to do. Just <laughs> <laughs>